first video I've done on this uh, computer right here. I got the sugar peel. Oh, oh. oh kind of early in the morning here in California. It actually is. Not that early. 7.05. Been up for the last uh, about two hours. Yeah. So. I had a little small Super Bowl get together. Didn't even get to pass out the, the Super Bowl cupcakes. Didn't get to wear the Raiders hat. So um, I'm gonna do this quick. Um, I watched the Super Bowl and um, pretty exciting game. Um, I think the rookie that got the interception that shut down the Seahawks should have been MVP. And if that guy that, you know, the rookie that got the interception that stopped the Seahawks from going into beast mode on the very next play and winning the game, if that guy would not have made the play to win the game, they would have not won the game, therefore, you know. If you don't give that guy the MVP, then you give Julian Edelman the MVP. By no stretch at all. I, you know, Tom Brady had an excellent game, still for 300 yards, four touchdowns, and whatnot. Yeah, he had a great game, but he was not the MVP of the game. Do you hear Dan Patrick over there? Okay. So. Those of you watching uh, the, the Super Bowl, notice at the end of the game, when the guy gets the interception, and they're all headed up to the stage, he wasn't up there. Notice, after the guy gets the interception, a couple people spoke to him on the grass there. I forgot the, other, the, the young lady's name. She speaks to the guy. But that guy was completely snubbed. The man who wins the Super Bowl was snubbed. If you pay real close attention, there's uh, even if you T-vote it, I want people who have t voted this to go back and look at it. As they're going up to the stage or whatever and they're showing uh, Tom Brady get the MVP or whatnot, you see that guy, the same young, uh, what is his name? I don't want to, I'm just going to call him the rookie. The same rookie. You see the guy like, that's mine. He's like, that's mine. I don't know if anybody saw that but me, but that guy was snubbed. The person who won the Super Bowl, the person who said, I had like a vision that something was going to come my way, I, that I was going to make a play. The same guy, snubbed, couldn't, did that. I, I never once saw him hold the Super Bowl trophy after the end of the game. Yep. Because I've seen and listened to all this conspiracy theory stuff, I saw a whole different take on the game. Now, the Patriots win. We're going to go back to war. Guarantee we're going to be blowing up some shit probably, probably after the game. They start sending off missiles and some shit somewhere. So, <laughs> I don't know. But today's episode of 40 Minutes is going to be filled with some of everything. Last week, you know, I was tired of hearing about the Islamic State. What is Islamic State? They, you know, Islamic this, Islamic... It's Islamophobia, that's what it is. It's a, you know, I, I have some very volatile friends, acquaintances, and um, the guy was like, oh, Muslim. What do you know about Muslims? You know any people that are Muslim? It's in the Quran. They're evil. They're bad. I'm like, have you ever read the Quran? I tried, but I couldn't find an English version. I ain't gonna lie. And then I even uh, downloaded the, uh, the app they have on uh, Windows 8 app. You can download the Bible. You can download, you know, the Quran, and they have a translation. Okay, I hit translation. 
And, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not going to make, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody's language, but I don't understand the chant. I'm listening, I'm like, how can you expect anybody that is non-Arab speaking to hit translate and listen to a Quran in a language that they can't even speak? If I can't read it, and I hit translate, at least put it in English so I can read it. If you hit the the, 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 the button so you can hear the, the vocal translation, it's not translated in English. So, how can somebody learn something about something they don't know if they can't understand what the hell they're trying to learn? So I just said, the hell with the Quran, I'm not even going to try. And I deleted the Quran, and I deleted the Bible, all out of all my... I can't have one, I can't, I don't want the other. Can't study them both, compare them, they don't want to mess with them. Nope. But I'm tired of seeing people, they're cutting people's heads off. They're doing this and they're doing that and they're doing this and they're doing that. Christians killed a lot of people. You know. And then we had the the Israel talk. I said, picture yourself, the President of the United States of America. So you have to pledge allegiance to Israel. Are you the President of the United States? Or are you the governor of the United States that gets your orders from the president of Israel. If I am the president of the United States, I will not be beholden, I, I, I will not be, what's the word, um, there's a word I want to use, I can't think of it. I know you have it in your mind right now. So, if I'm the President of the United States of America, my number one priority is the people of the United States of America and the people's needs within the United States of America. Why would I have to pledge allegiance or notice or have to publicly say these people exist when everyone knows they're there. So, during the Israel thing and Obama just doesn't like Netanyahu. Well, there are some videos on YouTube on uh, all those websites. Look at how the people of Israel treat other people of other colors. I mean, look at Israel for what they really are. Edomite! So, when you look at these people and how they carry on, if I was the President of the United States of America and I'm black, I would not want to be beholden or, or uh, I don't know if that's going on. I wouldn't want to be someone who who owes a debt who, or who continues uh, uh, to pay someone else's debt to somebody else's society. I, I, I don't know. I can't explain it, but I, if I'm the president of the United States of America, America comes first. I don't care about Israel. I don't care about Iran, Iraq. I don't care about Mexico. I don't care about Canada. I don't care about England. I don't care about France. I don't care about Germany. I don't care about... Uh, Australia, I don't care about uh, Zimbabwe, I don't care about uh, Saudi Arabia, I care about the United States of America first. First. Look how these news or organizations talk and how they carry on about, uh, you know, Obama. And then uh, they had this, uh, I was watching on the news, they had something about a the, the all standards for schools. 
apparently, you know, a bunch of right wing, right wing, right, right, the right, the, the, one of these groups of people are saying that, you know, this whole new standards for schools is wrong because it teaches radical Islam. It doesn't teach radical Islam. There would be nowhere in America you could find a radical, radical Islam teacher. You know, I told a friend of mine that I could get a, a black and yellow turban and put like a, a black and yellow flag behind me and say, Palamala, Palamala, Lala, Palamala, Palamala. And then at the very end of me saying, Palamala, Palamala, Lala, show Palamala hitting somebody and knocking the ball out of their hands and shit. It's because this is ridiculous. Now, if one religion says, oh, it's okay to kill people, what did our religion say? You know, what did the Christians say? Before they get on it, what, what were the Christians doing before their crusade? <laughs> well, our Christian numbers are getting low. What are we going to do? We got a crusade. We got a crusade. Get ready to crusade. We're going to a crusade. We're going to crusade. We're going to crusade. And they went and crusaded through the towns with their big old hoodies on, they had the hoodies on, and they chanting and shit, and they're doing the crusades, and if you wasn't a Christian, they would fucking cut your head off. Ah. All I know is this, you can't force people into a race war, you can't force people into a holy war, you can't force people into a war that they don't even want to war for. You kind of think differently. Let's see how it feels to brush my teeth at the same time. Okay. Okay. Yeah, got all the Super Bowl nachos out of there. So, they got us watch this religious war fold out, unfold on TV. And every other word, Islamic State. Well, like I was told, again, I was watching some stuff about Israel, and it really disturbed me. I'm thinking, like, the United States of America does all this for these people? No wonder all the black people, apparently, in America that were stolen from a certain part of Africa because they were certain. I don't want to go there. But now, Yeah, last week people must have like like a super astro or something. So, <sighs> okay, now I'm done with my shit down. No, I don't. So, like I was saying, this whole race thing is, is stupid. And like I said, I watch these videos about Israel, how Israel really thinks. They were calling people of color infiltrators, and if we let so many of them in here, we won't have our own Jewish state. Now, I was telling a friend of mine, is there a Christian state? 
Is there a Pentecostal state? Is there an African state? Is there an African American state? Is there an English state? Is there a I guess that is there a Muslim state? Is there there's a Jewish state, right? But they, 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 there can't be an Islamic state. There can't be an Islamic state. Why can't there be is an, is an Islamic state? How come the Islamic people, how come there isn't a Hispanic state? There's, there's a Hispanic state, I think, but a Hispanic state. How come there isn't a Hispanic state? How come there isn't an African American state? How come there isn't an Islamic state? How come there is a Jewish state? How come there is no English state? No Aboriginal state? No Indian state? No Cuban state, no New York state of mind. How come some can have and some can't have? Who deserves to have? Who deserves to choose those who can and cannot have? Who gave whom the power to control what is gained and what is lost on this world. Who has the right to know the truth or know what is truth? It's too early. It's just Now let's get back to the serious talk. The cupcakes are almost the same. One's chocolate, one's non-chocolate. One's chocolate with green frosting and a brown foot roll. One's regular cake flavor with green frosting and a brown foot roll. They pretty much probably taste the same except one tastes chocolatey and the other don't. So it doesn't matter. The snow is full of sugar and carbohydrates and probably shit my body doesn't need. Let alone the ink. The ink, I mean, the, the coloring in the frosting. <laughs> Might be ink, I don't know. It looks stupid. People who smoke those uh, blunts or those, uh, they smoke tobacco. And, oh, I'm just smoking a joint. No, you're smoking tobacco. 
You inhale that cigarette the same way, you'll get the same feeling. Never did, never will. So, what I'm trying to say is, people, is that we pick and choose our battles. And I was talking with a friend of mine, and, and the whole thing came out about this and that, and, and Israel and the Middle East and all that crap, and you know, good, bad, and, and Islam and all that shit. What do you think about Islam? Like, what is there to think about Islam? I don't know about it, don't care about it, don't care for it. Don't care about Christianity, don't know about it, don't care for it. Have I studied the Bible a little bit? Yes, I have. Don't care for it. Because I've learned how to let other people study for me. I take their studies, not the scientific proof, or not. It's rather to believe them or not. So you tell somebody a story truthfully and they believe it, and you be lying out your teeth? Yeah. But it's up to the person to interpret what you're telling them. So when I tell people stuff on here, you have to look through my shit because I'm I, I put it out there. I put it all out there. And then I put it in the middle. And I put stuff around it. And I put stuff in front of it. And I put stuff on it. And I take stuff off of it. And I give you images. You look. People call me grumpy. And this is how I look. I'm in grumpy mode. I can't back like grumpy. My eyes back like grumpy. But regardless of what look or what image or what this or what that, everything is based on your own interpretation. The truth is based on your interpretation. Rather these people deserve their own state or not. Rather these people deserve to be able to defend themselves. Rather these people deserve to be in the land that they were placed into. Anybody can claim a whole bunch of things. We belong there. How come they didn't bring those people here? How come they didn't plop them down in the, in the Sahara Desert? How come they didn't put them in in England, how come they put them in the Middle East? And then how come they pushed those other people that were already there into the sea? How can you ask for compassion from a country that you demand they owe? How do we owe Israel anything? We should treat them like we treat every other person in the region. We should treat them like we treat every other state in Africa, because that's pretty much what all those little African nations are. They're little states with no leader, because they don't want that continent to ever have anything. And when you find out how this world is built, what this world is built around, you're going to come to an conclusion like, a conclusion like I do, that these people don't care about another group of people and all the people suffer when the truth is withheld from the people. And once again, you think I'm speaking in a riddle, but I'm just telling you the truth. And when the truth comes out, all these people who are hiding the truth from the people will understand not letting the people know the truth hurts all of the people. And your crusade has failed. It does not have, not only have you harmed your people by destroying the other people, you raised your people to emulate the people that they have set out to destroy. That's stupid. That's just dumb. That's mismanagement. I ain't mad at you. I'm just disappointed in your lack of uh, originality. <laughs> you know? So, when the world comes to an end, it won't come to an end, people. There'll be reset. There'll be loud whistle and noise. People walk around in days for close to 30 days. And after those 30 days, there'll be a grand reprogram. 
So next to all the chaos, there'll be a little light. I promise. And the ball will start rolling again. Trust me. This happened at least twice in my lifetime. And if you sit back and look, you'll see several resets. And if you know what to look for, but just understand this one thing. When you grow up to hate another people, or when you're taught to hate somebody, or when you're shown a certain group of images to hate a certain specific group of people, you're only being taught to hate yourself. Because inevitably, you've been taught to mimic those same people that you go on TV taught to destroy. You're going to mimic them first before you destroy them. You're going to copy them. You're going to replace them with your own and then destroy them. So, don't be mad, everybody. You've been replaced. I know this because I talk about conspiracy stuff a lot. Because I watch that because I stopped talking about race and started studying race. And it's not worth the effort for those out there who are fighting the fight to change it. <laughs> that fight is long gone and passed. That fight's over. They march for civil rights instead of intellectual rights. Treat me just like you treat him. If you have a half a lick of sense, you don't want to be treated like him. Because if you notice how he's treated, you wouldn't want to be treated like him. But it's too late. Done. People. Moral contrary is this. We have a long road to go. We are being taught to hate a group of people. And I can see, I hear the response. This guy says, Obama's a Muslim. It's not right. I'm like, would it matter if Obama's a Muslim or not? I don't give a damn what Obama is. Obama is my president. I didn't give a damn what George Bush was. George Bush was my president. I didn't give a damn what Bill Clinton was. Bill Clinton was my president. I didn't give a damn what Ronald Reagan was because Ronald Reagan was my president. Jimmy Carter was my president. Gerald Ford my president. Richard Nixon. Wait a minute, was I born? My president. Regardless if I like any of these guys, because I did not like Obama, I do not like Obama, and I never once said I was an Obamanite. No. But this is an Obamanation. But now it's not my fault. Once again, the person that won the Super Bowl was snubbed in the celebrations at the end of the game. So, out of all you go through in life, and out of all you see in life, the only person that you ever owe anything to, actually, is yourself and your God. Regardless if your God is an old white man in a big white robe, or your God is some big jolly fat guy, or your God is some big black goddess, if your God is some black statue, if your God is some big nose standing in a damn uh, pyramid, regardless of what your God is or who your God is, right now in these times, you have to love yourself. You have to show respect to others. And you have to forget what you think your differences are. You have to forget that, you know what? I'm not going to worry about this black guy over here. I'm not going to worry about this white man over here. I'm not going to worry about this Mexican. I'm not going to worry. Why are you worrying about these other people anyway? You're just supposed to respect and love worry and fear 
control. I'm worried about paying my bills. I'm worried about this. I'm worried. I fear of that. Control. Control who? Control you. Control your thoughts. This is your brain now. I can go get a skillet, put some eggs in it, and fry them on the fucking stove and say that's your brain on drugs. But this is your brain now. You can scramble up your real shit as much as you want to as long as you got this. And this camera, the one that's pointing right here, there's a disclaimer that says this camera can turn on and record at any time. There's a disclaimer that says this can turn on and record at any time. Hell, this phone right here does not even have an app for a flashlight. I have a flashlight on here, so I have to turn the camera on to use the flashlight. And if the camera comes on, they can record at any time. When you go out to the beach and you take that beautiful picture, they own the copyrights because you took it on their film. You took it on their film. Their film. Their app. Your memory, your memory stick, your money, their app. Their app means that's their picture. That picture of the beach that you're going to put on your calendar that you've sold 500,000 copies right now. Your calendar's going to be out. They own the rights to that picture because you took it on their app. When I wanted a flashlight app, the flashlight app for use of the camera why do the flashlight need to use the camera they are afraid of your thoughts somebody is either recording us as a remembrance of who we are or they're just flat out afraid of your thoughts a combined thought can manifest in reality, correct? If everybody was thinking about the same God, it would exist, right? We don't know what we are capable of. We know what we're told. We know who our allegiances are to. We know who we were told to pray to. We know what symbols we were told to worship. We know what idols we were told to vote on. O seven, O one, O two, O three. We are told everything. We used to have little black books. Now we got little black boxes. When we crash, they will dig this up to find out everything we did. Why is there a rush to buy all your old phones at any cost? How come I have to erase every text message I get? My old phone, they would never be in the old phone. They would just fall off. They're in here forever. There's a record of how we think. This very computer that I am filming on right now has a facial recognition program. I have not activated this program. This program turns on almost every 20 minutes reminding me to start my facial recognition. Sometimes when I work out there on my Xbox 360, they tell me on my Kinect, we cannot see your face to verify it's you for this workout. I am innocent. Why must I be followed within my own home? I was told that these TVs and these phones have like a sonar function. It will map your living room. It will map your bed. They will map your child's bedroom. 
There's a computer in every room in this house, and at least one of them have this uh, sonar program. Every room in my home has been firing some computer right now. They can walk the blueprint better than I can. Every video I've taken outside, they've got footage. They've got the triangulation. They've got the satellites. Oh, one more thing. I'm watching, um, not watching, I'm, I read a lot of news. You can't really trust a lot of that stuff. We have like five minutes left, four minutes left. And it's talking about all the space junk around the planet. There's over 300,000, 400,000 pieces of just junk up there in space. And they show the big map where there's like so much shit up there. It's like completely surrounding the planet. I'll look at the sky every fucking night, excuse my language folks, and I don't see shit with my bare eyes. Is that shit beyond the moon? Or is it between the earth and the moon? Because when I look up at the moon, I see nothing. Except for this one star that looks like it's supposed to be beyond the moon, but the way the moon shines on it sometimes, it looks like it's like, oh, for real, is that, it must be the space station or something, because it's like in front of the moon. There's you can see the way the moon shines off of it. If there's so much crap up in space, how come we can't see it with our bare eyes? Is it that small? The moon is big. And if something is going in front of the moon, there's supposed to be hundreds of thousands of pieces, and there's no room in space for space shuttles to go off the planet anymore because we keep on leaving garbage in space. How come we can't see it with our eyes? Looking up there, look at that space junk just flowing in front of the moon and shit. We must be the dumbest people in the history of people on this planet. Did you know the person that won the Super Bowl? It appeared he got snubbed at the end of the game. I don't know. It might be, but... Out of all the things we've been told, out of all the things we've seen or we thought we've seen, out of all the things you'll read, I want you to read up this, though, about all the space debris. The hundreds of thousands of pieces of space debris floating around the planet, and you can't see it with your naked eye. Is it beyond the moon? From the moon? What? Um... We can second guess a whole bunch of stuff. Our government only fights for freedom of speech when it's the Sony network, the Sony industry. Um, I'm not a fan of Donald Sterling. What if I told my white girlfriend, don't hang around the black guys over there? That's freedom of speech. I told my white girlfriend, Hey, don't go down to that store over there because there'll be some brothers hanging out from that store and you know, our brothers be getting around white women. If I tell somebody not to hang around a group of people because of concern for that person or whatnot or re whatever, that is freedom of speech. It's kind of foul for a country like ours to say it's okay to make fun at another country's leader and say let's kill them. Even in a movie. But you won't defend an old man from the old school with old ways because you come off like a bigot. We can't have a double standard ever because it won't work. If you won't fight for the single man, but you will fight for the corporation, they will never fight for the people. You won't fight for the billionaire, but you make him a two billionaire but you'll fight for the multi-billion dollar company so they can have freedom of propaganda. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of movie that's propagandizing things. The sniper movie is sad, but it is what it is. We have the right to choose. That's one thing that makes us different than any animal or any creature on this planet. But it's the choices that we make for other people that sometimes be the most hypocritical choices. I can't stop you from drinking because I drink. I can't stop you from smoking because I smoke. 
but I'll be damn sure to make sure that you don't give my kids none of this stuff. I'll be damn sure to make sure the people in the future won't have to suffer like I did because of our ingesting this stuff. I have ingested this stuff. But you have to understand, people, as Americans, Americans need to take care of America and America first. You can no longer step foot in somebody else's country and tell them what to do because it's in our best interest. What is on our best interest as a people in the next people's country? Their commerce, their resources. What is in our best interest? What is in our best interest that suits us at home? I love my people here in America. I want my people here in America to be safe. I want my people to be the strongest people on the planet. But we cannot be strong by being made weak to fight battles that have nothing to do with our personal needs. See, there is a war going on in this country between a couple of factions. I can honestly tell you, they're going after the good old boys right now with the biggest head of steam they've ever had. They're shutting down Hollywood by throwing their movies out there for free. They're breaking down all kind of shit with this oil because now we've begun to sell our own oil. All of a sudden, oil is worthless. People, look at what's going down around you. These people are fighting themselves. They're trying to shut down the travel industry. Oh, we have measles now. Better watch out when you get on planes and go in large places. They're really going after the old school. They probably let something out in the air at Disneyland. You notice that they said Disneyland parks, but it only was one park in California. They said parks, you know, you know Disneyland and the California Adventures. But when you hear Disneyland parks, you think about Epcot Center in Florida and all of that. Then they say, well, be careful when you're on these airplanes now because they're breathing. They're going after the, the uh, travel industry. They're going after, uh, what was it called? I can't think of it. I just completely just spun my brain out trying to tell you folks the truth. Because nobody cares for the truth. The truth doesn't affect everyone. It only affects the poor people. And if you're a poor person, Nobody wants to hear you bitching about the truth. So, my last statement, because I'm over my limit that I give myself monthly. My last thing. People, when you go out to vote for this next president, put your money where your mouth is. Because that's the only way you're going to get these people to listen to you. You can go out and march in Ferguson, New York, Oakland, fucking San Antonio, Texas, Memphis, Tennessee. You can go march wherever the fuck you want to march when somebody gets shot in the back. Doesn't matter. You put your money where your mouth is and the laws will change. You throw some money behind a candidate and you tell that candidate what the fuck this is going to. This is going to this, this is going to that, and this is what you're going to do. This is how it's going to happen, and here's the money to make it happen. You want that job? You want that position in office? You want this bill to go through? You give us this, and you get that. Republicans are going after the Mexican vote. I will tell you right now, the Vice President of the United States of America will be a Hispanic man. Yes, he will. Rubio? Is it Rubio? I don't know. I was messing with somebody the other day. I said, yeah, Ricky Rubio, you going to vote for him? Ricky Rubio is a basketball player, folks. I'm not really just fucking with you. I'm just telling you the truth. The um, Vice President will be Hispanic. If the Republicans get their way, they will have a Hispanic vice president on the ticket strictly for the vote. 
I'm telling you. Now, personally, what I'd like to see, I'd like to see Condoleezza Rice and somebody else, the president and vice president. I'd like to see that. I'd also like to see if the vote is so close that the winner is the president and the second highest vote is the vice president. We need to start making both these parties work with each other. But we can't make them work for the people because the people, once again, like I said earlier, don't put their fucking money where their mouth is. This has been 40 minutes, six minutes too long. I'm out of here and you've been peed. Did you know the guy that won the Super Bowl was snubbed? 